Hello my soccer universe. Well, as the title says, it was a match day for outsiders. Uh, it is actually staggering what happened in Serie A this, this, this weekend. Because uh, it doesn't happen often that all the big three lose. Arguably the big four if you put Roma in there. Uh, although it's always at the moment between Napoli and Roma. And I think the pendulum swings towards Napoli. Uh, in that case. But uh, really, uh, that doesn't happen very often. And while I think Inter's was again a typical Inter fall, uh, Milan lost an outstanding game against Napoli where I still maintain they were the better team. Um, it is Juventus that it absolutely takes the headline there because that was a lifeless performance. A lifeless performance, something not worthy of the black and white stripes. And speak of black and white stripes, of course, we are the black and white stripes of Udine for a second uh, week in, in, in a row. They keep winning. They are the story of, of this young Serie A season now taking down Inter uh, as well. So a pretty big story of them. But going back to Juventus, uh, such a lifeless performance and, and Allegri that just seems to be so ready to get fired and are blaming injuries and you know everybody not making chances except uh, not the tactics of uh, whatever. Seems like he's a dead man walking in a figurative sense, not a literal sense of course, um, but they cannot afford to fire him. <laughs> I mean, it is really, really sta staggering. And Juventus are now paying the price for really horrendous squad building. I want to say even starting before Ronaldo came in and now they're paying the bill. This squad is an absolute mess. And it really doesn't help what's going on. Uh, Inter, as I said, when we talk Ud Udine, uh, Inter also is again... They don't seem to have the mental fortitude to break down tough opponents. Uh, it's so many mental lapses in there and not good defending, which is also surprising because, I mean, they kept the defense. Skrinja was about to leave for PSG and so on. They kept the defense together. And yet still, they are conceding uh, really, really, really bad goals. And then if we go to the third big team, which is, of course, Milan, I can actually think of all the three, they look the best. They just lost to a Napoli side that was absolutely ruthless and had the killer instinct down. Uh, I think overall, over the balance of the game, Milan were not the worst team. I actually think they were slightly better. They showed a shoulder lip, but there was only a short period at the beginning of the second half where I really thought, yeah, here they are under pressure and Napoli uh, are definitely uh, going for the goal, which then came due to a uh, penalty. However, uh, it's all the fine margins that were in there that, that actually went in towards Napoli. And also, I think that Leao missing hurt, hurt Milan more than Napoli missing actually Victor Osimhen. So, just first few thoughts. I would say here are the results from the weekend. I, again, I saw the I saw um, three games and the highlights of Monza against Juve. Um, so I cannot tell you much. I mean, the Ligurian derby went to Spezia. Sampdoria, as we'll see, are already in big trouble. Torino, surprisingly, losing at home to Sassuolo. Didn't necessarily expect that. But we got to start with Udine's win over Inter. Where Barella, with a beautiful freak, gives Inter the fifth-minute lead. But then, uh, you know, a cross in Grinja, very... Uh, you know, gangly creature putting uh, the ball in. I mean, there was not a, a whole lot of body control there, it seems. Uh, and so it's 1-1 one, one at the half with Udine actually uh, becoming more and more a force to be reckoned with, and especially Deodofeo. And I, I remember he had this uh, really good season at Milan, but Milan could not hold on to, on, on to him. He is absolutely amazing in Serie A. And he is the heart and soul of this Udine team. And this Udine team actually do the right changes and um, get then the go-ahead goal through Biol again after the Olofeo corner. And then in stoppage time, Arslan also after the Olofeo assist makes it 3-1. And I think the Biol goal, I mean, it's really, if you have a run, all the things go, go your way because it goes crossbar and goes in and not out. So, yeah. Uh, big win for Udine. Not that it came unexpected, but still. 
has to be given credit to. We see Lazio winning at Cremonese, a 4-0, a, a double by, uh, early double by uh, Immobile there. Uh, Fiorentina uh, coming back from the big defeat to Bajak here, beating Verona 2-0, which is actually a pretty big win for them. Uh, and then, I mean, the result, and all talk should actually be about the wonderful Milan-Napoli game, but the talk has to be about Monza against Juventus. And the talk has definitely to be. I have been waxing lyrically about Di Maria for years now. I still maintain if Di Maria plays in the World Cup final, Argentina win the World Cup. That, that, in, that injury was crucial for Argentina not winning the World Cup. I think he was one of the most underappreciated uh, uh, players over the past decade. However, he was... He epitomized the downfall of Juventus in this game with this stupid elbow on Itzo. That was absolutely not ne 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 necessary. He doesn't want to, and if you look at the Reaper, he doesn't want to wrestle himself free. He is going straight for uh, the big hit. An absolutely ridiculous red car, absolutely unnecessary. I know Juventus were frustrated by Monza, and this is a Monza team now under new coaching. That had not even, I mean, they got as much as a point so far in the whole Serie A history. It's the first year. And now they play the big boys and it was a boring, nothing happening match. I mean, uh, uh, it, it was a rollback from, um, well, I don't know which, can, 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 that was the, the one real chance. But that red card then wakened up Monza, who still didn't have great chances. However, it only needs Gitkir in the 74th, 4th minute, just one chance and it goes in. And there's nothing coming from Juventus back. And then they had to stand in front of the fans to really, really hear it. To really hear it. Uh, and uh, stand up, get, uh, get all the abuse. But you could also see there was a lot of distance between the Juventus fans and the Juventus players. Usually the players stand at least at the touchline. They were standing well at where the box was. So absolute hor uh, absolutely horrendous Juventus. And you really wonder where this is going. Where is this going with Juventus? Because the team, I think they have actually a really good squad and ahead had a half a season. I thought they might they might actually be up to something. But at this moment, I think it needs a re major rebuild, a major rethink. And it might as well have been that the worst thing that Juventus ever did is Maybe not even the second of Allegri uh, after the first season with Ronaldo in 19, but that they got rid of Sarri, who just had the title and he only won the title because he's, he felt the pressure that he could not instill his ideas into the squad. He would not have been given the time. I think this is where Juventus eventually really broke. It was already tearing at the seams, but I think this sacking, uh, because you had a non juve like coach, to be honest, but you had a coach who had at least an idea and you have to stick with that. Then you fire Pirlo, then you bring back Allegri and it just all goes down the hill. Okay, let's go over to Rome where Atalanta took a lead through 18-year-old Scalvini. Yeah, did you? Hoyland assist who just came from the Austrian Bundesliga. I haven't even realized that Atalanta has now light blue away jerseys. Uh, it's kind of, uh, was kind of surprising to me. But that goal actually ignited Roma, who had many good chances and misses, uh, namely from Tammy Abraham, a few. Uh, Roma well could have deserved a draw out of this one. Mourinho got sent off for uh, descent, although I, I have, I have to, he said it was a misunderstanding, so we have to see how the authorities or whatever react to that. However, the longer the game went on, the more I felt that Atalanta assured of themselves that they get the win there. Uh, Roma then, uh, it got a little bit too more quick and rush and no, not um, very in, intelligent play to get uh, an equalizer. And so in the end, Atalanta played it home safe. And I think at this moment, it's safe to say that we can announce Atalanta are back and are back in the running for a potential Champions League spot, which makes the league actually quite more exciting. And this is an Atalanta squad that has been majorly rebuilt, uh, have no European commitment, so they can focus on the league. So I think Atalanta might be a force to be reckoned with. I want to end, of course, at uh, Milan-Napoli. I already said in the preamble, 
I thought that Milan were the more proactive, the more dangerous team uh, from the start. Um, it really uh, showed you that was a great chance by Giroud. They, they created other chances as well. Napoli was not really in there. However, this Quarazgelia guy really caused some trouble. He did not do much that you could look at, but what he did uh, cru crucially, uh, he forced Kier into a foul. So uh, one of the defenders already has a yellow card because there's no other way to contain him. And then the same thing goes for Calabria before the half. So you have two, defend, uh, uh, two defenders um, that play against Quarazgelia who are very li likely to put another one in, forcing the changes. So Kier and Calabria have to come off and it's Kalulu and Dest coming on. And as I think Kalulu is a good replacement, but Dest, I actually think that going forward, he will provide very good um, uh, parts for Milan. However, I felt that, you know, having this collaborator and him playing against Quarazgelia, this was a little bit of a risk and it did not pay off because he then gives away the penalty where first you think, oh, he played the ball. No, if you look at the right angle, he totally takes out Quarazgelia. So the penalty is uh, given and Politano steps up and Mike Mignon has one of the best, if not the best, save rate uh, in uh, Europe at this moment for saving pen penalties. I think it's one out of three. And he was there. It's just that the ball went between his leg and his arm, just in that little hole. Politano, this was such a badly taken penalty. He almost had that penalty. It was just physics that did not work for him because you just cannot put this together. Uh, he was so upset with him himself and so was I. However, that actually then ignited Milan, especially when Diaz came on and Messias for Salamakers and Kronic. Uh, the game really kicked into another gear and Milan were then creating chances, especially. The Ketelare finally showed what he can, he, he can do. He had a great pass onto Hernandez who put it in Giroud, who can put it into an empty net more or less. Sixth, seventh, ninth minute, the game is level. And then Milan again, creating chances was the Ketelare with multiple really good passes. I really liked what I, uh, I really liked what I saw from him. This was a, a first touch of his talent there. And Milan had the chances to take, to take it, but again, most of the chances they took it, they were kind of off ag again. It was, they were not hitting the target or Meret had actually uh, good saves. And then out of nowhere, Maria Rui whips one in. I mean, there was a, a situation where Simeone, Simeone was cleared. Uh, the second wave of, of attack is coming. Mario Rui whips one in and, Sim and Simeone just attacks the ball and it goes into net with the first real chance for Napoli after they had taken the lead. Up until they didn't, what those tend to miss, Napoli were really good. But then there was nothing. It was all Milan. At least, you know, I yes, red and uh, black glasses uh, on me. But I really felt that this was all it. But I think that really hurt the Milan. And they had then a hard time getting back. It was then oddly come coming on. But then they still had the chance. And they still created. And then Kalulu hits the crossbar. Uh, they were fighting for, for it. But it was also a little bit... Um, tough for uh, me, uh, for Milan to then also avoid the counterattacks coming from Napoli. But uh, really, this it was an amazing game. Uh, one one thing, Politano had to come off with an injury and Zerbin, young Zerbin came, came on. And I think especially when he came on, you, you, you see he was not quite up to the task um, for a while and Milan completely used his position there to um, assert themselves. Again, it was a loss that I almost expected because Milan lately lose always to Napoli at home. Uh, and then they win in Naples. So that's the other end of the, of the story. Napoli was, was a good, good run. And I already thought, you know, maybe um, it's not the worst thing to get this loss out of your way and out of your system. And now you can re rebuild because you played well. I think that I, you know, my wife uh, said, I'm so sorry that they lost. And I said, I know I'm not happy that they lost and you know it's not both of my teams last also lost um, both of my teams did not win this weekend or lost this weekend but at least for Milan like, like I said the performance uh, kept me in a positive spirit I think going forward I'm not so worried about Milan yes with Leao I think you probably score another goal and you get a point out of this one so let's look at the standings uh, in Serie A uh, it is now Napoli ahead of Atalanta Two up top and we have Udine in there, we have Lazio moving up there and then it's Milan, Roma, Inter, Juve. 
So kind of a, a weird table, but you also see the chances that Napoli na are now the favorites. And we'll see it in the expected standings ahead of Milan and Inter. So maybe it's a three-way race at, at, at the moment. Although I honestly think that, that for a type, I still have to see whether this Napoli um, uh, team now without the, your Insigne and so on, maybe they have the more mental fortitude meanwhile. And I'm not praising Napoli, I guess, enough because Paletti given the players that they have lost that they are competitive is not something that ever that anyone would have expected so uh, i need to give napoli a whole lot more due there as well um but you know napoli milan inter um seems like a three-way race i am at this moment actually not sure about inter but uh you know never count out the dead in a way Juventus definitely out of it I would say um, on the bottom uh, Monza Cremonese Sampdoria Sampdoria really lo looking bad Cremonese I think the league is a step uh, too far for them uh, and then you know Hellas Bologna also kind of uh, da, 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 da. Uh, if you look at the performance bars I mean Udine is the big surprise of the season they have now I think for three videos in a row they have always had the, the, the biggest uh, uptick uh, there, Napoli and Anna, Milan still positive, but you see Inter, especially Juventus, uh, some some Sampdoria probably the biggest disappointment. Um, and uh, as expected, I already said it, Napoli are now the also favorites to win it all ahead of Milan and Inter. Yeah, if you win against the previous favorites, I think that seems about fair, and it might well come down between Nap Napoli and Milan. This is something that has been building over the years, and I always said if Milan wouldn't win it, yes. Roma would be nice, but I don't see Roma challenging for, for, for the title. I wouldn't be too sad if Napoli would win the league. Of course, I would like to Milan wins it overall. Cremonese seems to be a goner already. Uh, coming back from the international break, we actually start with a really nice fixture. Inter-Roma. That will be interesting. I was also thinking Napoli-Torino. Empoli-Milan seems like, you know, Empoli is a tough opponent. Especially away from home, so I don't want to say it's a foregone conclusion, but it's not the greatest matchup. Uh, of the other ones, you know, Juve Bologna uh, is becomes almost a must watch, and then uh, Atalanta Fiorentina also kind of interesting. I want to see what Udine can do against Hellas. So, yeah, that's it from me from Serie A. Give me a thumbs up, enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!